Hello everyone, welcome to another PSD to CSS Online video tutorial. My name is Sean and uh, this is actually not as much a tutorial as an explanation of what the final crop is. Um, it's uh, one of the guidelines that you use when you prepare your Photoshop file or GIMP file uh, for conversion into a web page at PSD to CSS Online. Um, the, the actual instructions are just to crop the image to the size that it already is which doesn't make any sense at all. It doesn't sound like it makes any sense, but I'm going to show you why it makes sense, and maybe if, uh, if you can see what the point is, what the, uh, you can, uh, I, have, I have a number of users who have problems related to this, and, and uh, <coughs> if you can see why, it, uh, why it's a good idea, maybe that'll help illuminate and maybe alleviate some of the, some of the problems. So uh, what we're going to look at here is a Photoshop design of a simple and kind of useless web page, but uh, <coughs> it's got a cute kit in it. Um, this uh, is just got two layers. There's the primary layer that is the background image, and then uh, there's another layer that has some text here that just describes what it is. But uh, as you can see, I have... here, let's zoom in on this. I'm, uh, I'm kind of zoomed out. This is a pretty big web page. <coughs> Excuse me. It's a thousand pixels wide, um, which isn't terribly big. But uh, but the thing about it is that this this layer, this background layer, is pretty. It's big. It's much larger than the visible active area of the Photoshop file. Um, this this is the size of the file uh, per. Let's see. What do we call it over here? Canvas size. It's the size of the canvas. Um, it's a thousand pixels by eight hundred pixels. And uh, I don't know if on the vi YouTube video if you can see the. Uh, the borders of the the background layer, but you can see them here. It's it goes from there. I don't know how much of that's inside the the viewport, but um, but it's big. It's it's taller and much much wider, and and drops down below. Um, so it goes way down here too. It's uh, it's enormous. It's much much bigger. And you might think, well, so what? I don't care. I only am worried about what's in the. Uh, uh, in the active region, what's in the canvas. But the problem is that PSD to CSS Online is going to take that whole layer and convert it to an image and and include it absolutely positioned correctly in your page so it'll look right. But uh, at, at least in this case, it'll look it'll look right uh, most of the time. You'll see what I mean in a moment. But, uh, but it's, number one, extremely un, uh, uh, inefficient because you have a giant image where you only need a much smaller one. Um, and you're browsers, you know, your your web server is going to serve up that giant image and all of your users are going to download the whole big giant image and only see the part that uh, you're trying to show them. Um, so that's inefficient. And you can also p uh, potentially have other garbage on the outside of that uh, image that you don't want other people to see. Um, I'll show you what I mean here. If, if, I, if I actually move this layer, there's other stuff out there. And I purposely put some garbage in it, but... Um, you may have things there that you don't want your users to see. Uh, if you didn't use a photograph, if you used something that uh, you built in a in another Photoshop file and copied and pasted in here, you might have who knows what's in there. But but it's some, probably something you don't want to see. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, also, these giant background images, Photoshop doesn't compress them in the PSD file. So so this this simple two-layer image that's only a thousand pixels wide, supposedly, uh, is eight megabytes. And it makes an eight megabyte PSD. So here it is, right there. That's that's the image, and it's eight megabytes, huge. So it takes a long time to upload. It takes a long time to convert. Um, if it's more than eight megabytes, it's not even going to convert because that's the limit in size. So uh, I already uh, uploaded this file and uh, and converted it. And because it does take a while, I'm not going to do it again. I'll just show you what the outcome is. So you can see here's the page. It's about a thousand pixels wide, and it looks like. It looks like our Photoshop drawing, um, but if you scroll to the right, we still see all that garbage. We see all the stuff that we don't want to. This this whole page took a long time to to load because it's a giant JPEG file, and if it's PNG, it's even worse. See, this is the garbage I don't want to see. What I really wanted was just just this to be the web page and nothing else. And so what I'll do is we'll go back in Photoshop and we'll do the final crop. And all you got to do is take the crop tool. And exactly like the instructions say, you crop exactly to the size the image is. And there. Now my big big texture background is not a giant big texture background anymore. 
it's only exactly the size of this image. Everything is only the size of the image. If I had another layer that was sticking out over the any layers that are sticking out over the edge of the canvas, they get trimmed. And so if I save this now, file save, this is going to be a much smaller file. 4.9. So now it's not quite half, but much, much smaller. And if we go ahead and convert this now, you'll see it'll still take a little while. Five megabytes is a pretty good size file, but um, but you will see that uh, uh, the garbage area is gone now. Um, so uh, so those are the two reasons that you want to do the final crop. Um, a lot of times, if your PSD file is enormous in in megabytes, it's 12 megabytes, and you don't know why, it's just a simple web page. Probably the final crop will help. If you've got a relatively small design, and when you look at it with your browser, uh, open all the way to the you know as big as your window goes, uh, you might see garbage on the edges that you didn't you didn't intend to be seen, um, and the final crop can help you there too. So uh, so I'll finish here in a moment, and we'll look at it. There we go, and view your converted web page. Um, it still takes a little while to load that big JPEG. Did I call it JPEG? I thought I did. Oh, I didn't. It's a PNG. That's why it took so long. So, uh, but as you can see, if I make this big, it's I don't have the extra garbage anymore. It's only what I wanted to send. Um, and uh, of course, my mistake was to this should be called something .jpeg, so that that uh, underscore JPEG because there's no transparency. That's a different tutorial though. So uh, that's why you want to do the final crop. It really is just taking the crop tool and cropping the image to exactly the size it already is. And that's the trick, and it's useful, and uh, do it every time. The reason that I don't have a PSD to CSS online to do that automatically for you um, is that there are sometimes special tricks where you actually want something to stick out the edge. And then if I made, uh, if I made the tool automatically do the final crop, it would break those situations. Um, a good example is the uh, multi-page menu tutorial, or the multi I don't think it was a tutorial, but the multi-page menu uh, issue that uh, that is in a story from a couple weeks ago that you can see on the website. But, um, but in general, you want to do that, and uh, that's that. So thanks.